Um, okay, all right. So let's let's prove just a, a little piece of it. How about that? Yes. Oh, let's proof slash fun times. We'll even. Okay, all right. So uh, we are going to um, so assume. Uh, so here I kind of just summarized it, but assume that uh, a sub n and uh, b sub n are uh, positive, right? <laughs> and then um, also we, we can assume that the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n over b sub n is equal to L. And let's assume um, that it's just uh, greater than zero. So just to keep it a little bit simpler. OK, now what are we trying to show? Uh, we want to show, and let's also, let's also assume, so we'll only do part of it. We'll also assume that uh, the series B sub n uh, converges. OK? So um, in the limit comparison test, it's either they both converge or they both diverge. So here we'll only do the case where it uh, converges. OK, so we want to show, um, we want to show that um, a sub n converges. Yay. OK. So uh, let's see here. OK, so we are going to get a little clever. You guys ready to be clever? Yes? yes? OK, so do you guys agree? So L is some number, right? So do you guys agree that there exists some number? Uh, let's call it, um, hmm, favorite? Capital letter T for Teresa. Okay. There exists some number T such that uh, zero is less than L is less than T. Yes? Of course, right? Because L is equal to some number, so T is just some number that's bigger. So if L is four, then T could be five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever, right? You guys agree? OK, so if L was, say, infinity, well, then, of course, this wouldn't be true. But since L is a number, it's true, right? Can T be infinity plus 1? No. It has to be a number. Let's see, a number. OK. So anyways, um, continuing the fun times. OK, so here's the key. You guys ready? Since um, the limit, as n goes to infinity, of a sub n over b sub n is equal to L, then that means that we can get a sub n over b sub n as close to L as we want. Do you guys agree with that statement? That is true, right? Because that's the definition of uh, convergence of a sequence. So, so what this means, since uh, a sub n over b sub n is converging to L, then um, uh, let's then we can have this inequality a sub n over b sub n is also in between this interval for n greater than um, some other number let's call it m so for some number ooh not 4a for some number m greater than 0, of course. So basically what we're saying is, is there's a, a point where the, all the terms in the sequence um, are in between 0 and t, right? So like you imagine them being uh, really, really, really close to l. Because they converge to l, so they get closer and closer to l, right? So we can get them as close as we want. OK, so then we're almost done. This is like. Uh, that, that was the hard part. That's it. So then we can have the inequality a sub n is less than t times b sub n. Where did that come from? Just like 
Solving yeah, we just yeah we just move this over, right? The B seven, just move it over, right? So, and this is only for n greater than m, right? This is some number. Okay. Now, since since um, the series of B sub n's converges, then of course, oh. You guys okay over there? T times B sub n also converges, right? Do you guys agree? Why? Because T is just, yeah, it's just some number, right? So it also converges. So since A sub n is less than B sub n, or T times B sub n, um, then we can say that uh, a sub n converges by the by the because a sub n is always less than or equal to t times b sub n and t times b sub n converges so then that means a sub n converges by the the comparison test, right? Because it's less than. So the larger one converges, so then that means that the smaller one also converges. So by the comparison test. Ta-da! We're done. See? That was fun times. OK. Fun times. All right. So let's do an example. So let's say we want to test. Uh, the series for convergence, let's do it in green. The series n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over the square root of n cubed plus 3. Okay, so we're going to use the limit comparison test. So remember, what did we say about using the limit comparison test? When do we want to use it? When do we enjoy using it? Do the so when we well yeah so the integral test is usually pretty annoying to do right but when we want to use the comparison test but the inequalities are difficult to handle right so then but we still think of it the same way so like we think in our head we go hey this looks like I should compare with what what should I compare it with if you look at the the sequence and you think of the dominant terms. Which ones are the dominant terms? The n cube, right, which is under the square root. And on the numerator, there's only a 1. So then if you get rid of everything else, then what would you have left over? 1 over the square root of n cubed, right? Does that make sense? Now, do we know if the series of 1 over the square root of n cubed converges? Or diverges? Diverge. Why? Because the p It's a p-series, right? OK, so it's a p-series. So this is just a little kind of note to self, right? So the series 1 over the square root of n cubed is equal to 1 over, how should I write that? n to the 3 halves, right? <coughs> and that is? greater than 1, right, which means that it's going to converge, converge right? This is a convergent p-series. Remember, it converges if p is greater than 1, diverges if it's less than or equal to 1. Yes? What is it? Okay, so we're good, right? Okay, so then we go, um, uh, of course, we have to make sure that it's positive, but so then all we have to do now is we find the limit as n goes to infinity of the ratio of the two. So I have, OK, so this is 1 over the square root of n cubed plus 3. So that's a sub n over 1 over the square root of n cubed. OK, so then I get this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of, um, if I invert them and uh, multiply, can I put them all under one root like that? 
Okay, so then on top, what would I have? n cubed over n cubed plus 3. And that, what's the, what's the limit of, of this inside of the root? As n goes to infinity, that's equal to 1, right? And then the square root of 1 is equal to 1. So this is equal to 1. OK, so the key thing here is this is 1, which is greater than 0, right? So then that means that I, I, I can use the limit comparison test, which says that they either both converge or both diverge. So um, since the series 1 over the square root of n cubed converges, Um, this means that the series uh, 1 over the square root of n cubed plus 3 also converges by the, by the limit comparison test, right? By the LCT. That's it. Yes? Um, if it's not as important the comparison here as in the comparison test, any well, no, it is important what you pick because um, you can get funny things that happen. Um, for example, so you do have to, I guess, you would try to pick um, a series that, one, you know whether it converges or not. So usually it's a P-series or a geometric series because those we know a lot of. And... Um, you have to make sure that it's it's similar enough to the one that you're trying to show because otherwise your limit might uh, it might go to infinity when you find it or um, or you might get zero and remember when it's equal to zero um, you can only use it in one in one way and that is that you can only show if it's equal to zero you can only show that it converges if the other one c converges, not diverges, because you can get conflicting information. Um, so you can make up an example where, you know, you try, you, you can come up with some functions where this doesn't quite hold. So like, for example, we can make some, some stuff up for fun. Okay, so this is playing around. Okay, so let's say you have a series, right? So this is us kind of thinking. Um, so this one, I mean, by after what all we've done, we can pretty much tell right away what this one is going to, what? Yeah, it's going to converge, right? Because if we remove the two, this is like 1 over n squared. And so, um, you know, we can do a convergence test, but we know intuitively that it's going to converge. So, um, but let's say, for example, you do, you do, okay, so I'm going to, let's say you, you're not really thinking, you're just like, well, I don't know what to do, so I'm just going to pick one, and I'm going to do the limit comparison test because it seems like it works, you know. So you compare with 1 over n to the 1 half, which is a convergent or divergent series? Divergent. Divergent, right? Okay. So, you know, this is like you not knowing what you're doing. This is what we're pretending. So you go on and you go, okay, say, look, I'm going to find the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n squared plus 2 over 1 over n to the 1 half. And so, you know, you're happily following along your little steps, right? And you go, oh, this is n to the 1 half over n squared plus 2. Now, what is this equal to? The limit. Yes. This is equal to 0, right? Because the denominator is... Uh, getting much bigger than the numerator, right? So if you do L'Hopital's rule or whatever you want to do, um, you get that this is equal to zero. So then you might say, hey, well, since, um, since 1 over n to the 1 half diverges, then 1 over n squared plus 2 diverges, right? But that's completely false, and the theorem does not allow you to come to that conclusion, right? So this would be a... This right here is a completely 
incorrect conclusion. And the reason why is because you picked your um, the, the sequence that you chose to compare it with um, was uh, divergent, and the limit was equal to zero. If this would have equaled to a number, then you could have said, since this one diverges, the other one diverges. What if you compared it to one over n cubed? Then you, get, um, you would get infinity, which means that you can't use it. So a lot if you if you do it and you get infinity, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't use the limit comparison test. It might mean that you chose a bad sequence to compare it to. So Usually that's what it that's what it is. Your goal is to find something that'll make the limit one. A number. Or a number. So the easiest thing is if it equals to a number. Because then you can show that either they both converge or they both diverge. If it equals to zero, then you can only do it if the one you chose is convergent, then that means that um, the other one is also convergent. Mm -hmm. But if you think that it's divergent and you get that the limit is equal to zero, then you can't come to that conclusion. As we just saw, it did not work there. But notice, okay, so check this out. Let's say, so you don't, I don't feel like writing it down again, but let's say I, I just swap this one out for n to the 3 halves, which is a convergent series, right? Right. OK. Notice that if you swap this for n to the 3 halves, you still get 0 as the limit, right? But this time, it does give you the <coughs> correct conclusion. n to the 3 halves converges. So then it's OK to conclude that this series is going to converge, which is the, the, the true uh, result, right? So that's the thing. With L equals to 0, when the limit is equal to 0, you have to be more careful. That's all. If it equals to a number, then they both converge, both diverge. If it what equals to 0. Limit, I'm sorry, what is the limit equal to 0? In, in this one? Yeah. Well, the same thing. I mean, you can, you know, like if you divide top and bottom by n to the 3 halves. Or just 1 over infinity. Yeah. So you get 1 over infinity, and then it goes to 0. Great times, huh? Yeah, okay. All right.